Hello everyone, this is Hussein Rashad. Welcome to our course in building DAS network from planning to acceptance or distributed antenna system. Uh, we're, uh, today we're going to talk about DAS concept, which is session number one in chapter number one. Chapter number one, it's about introduction. It's introduction about DAS, distributed antenna system. During section number one, we're going to explain the DAS concept and what are the, DAS, the deployment challenges of deploying such a network on field. What is the DAS ecosystem? What are the companies participating or deploying DAS all over the world? What are the types of or the business model of such companies? You may heard about something called neutral host, uh, something like DAS vendor, mobile operators, mobile vendors, contractors, service company. All of these companies were going to, to know the differences between all of these companies. We are going to explain in more details what do they do uh, on site uh, in terms of DAS deployment. Uh, also, we are going to highlight the global market share between all of these companies. By the end of section one, we are going to explain the different phases of DAS deployment or of DAS project deployment, and we call it DAS project life cycle. You usually, when you are going to deploy DAS in building solution inside inside the building, you usually start with a planning phase, and then after you plan your network, you do design, and after you do design on a laptop or PC, you go to you go on field, you go on site and deploy and install your network, and after installation, you need to do some testing on the network to make sure it's working properly. And after testing, you do something called commissioning by commissioning your network by adding your cellular signal or signal sources or cellular sources. And then after that, you do some sort of acceptance test. You need to do acceptance test on the network. And after that, you might need to optimize your network to provide adequate coverage to, to make sure that you achieve your KPIs and so on. Maybe later in the future, you might need to provide monitoring uh, on your network. You need to do monitoring on your network. So in session number one, which about DAS concept, DAS stands for distributed antenna system. Okay, it's simply that you have an RF power source. This RF power source is transmitting a certain technology like 2G, 3G, 4G, or 5G. And then you take the output power of that signal source and distribute it among many number of antennas, many number of components inside the building, inside different floors in the building. So it's simply distributing a certain power, uh, a certain signal power inside different floors in the building. This building might be shopping mall, airport, campus, university, tunnel, uh, skyscrapers, or whatever. This is uh, what we mean by DAS, distributed antenna system. Okay, so to start with, as a mobile user, as a, a smartphone subscriber, you usually expect some aspects inside the building. You expect seamless wireless connectivity. Uh, when you are sitting at home, you need to do some calls, uh, you need to do online calls, you need to do online meeting, uh, video streaming, uh, you need to upload your video on YouTube, you need to publish your blogs and so on. Uh, in order to do so, you need to have a, a reliable wireless connectivity and seamless wireless con connectivity inside the building. You need also for, for calling, for voice calls, you need to make sure you are, uh, you are able to do your phone calls properly with your friends and with your customers. Also, you need to have adequate data rate, a good data rate to do internet browsing. Uh, you might need also to do some online gaming, uh, like I said, some uh, live streaming on YouTube. In this case, you need a very high data rate inside the building. In order to provide such services, in order to support such services inside the building, Mobile operators uh, have to deploy a dedicated system inside the building. They call it DAS, Distributed Antenna System, which provides uh, cellular coverage inside the building. There are many applications of DAS, of Distributed Antenna System. You might find DAS in different buildings around, around your area. You might find DAS in skyscrapers, like I said, in hotels, tunnels, uh, shopping malls, uh, sports stadiums, especially uh, World Cup is coming. So in the World Cup, for example, in the sports stadiums, you have to provide proper coverage for, for all people inside the stadium. You need to provide uh, higher data rates for online, uh, for video streaming, for example. Uh, also inside tunnels and railway, substations and metro station as well. You need to make sure that you have a proper coverage, 100% coverage inside such area. So how does how does works and what are the main components of DAS? 
as you can see here in the slide, let me just get my pointer here. You can see in the side, in the left-hand side, this is more familiar. This is familiar for you as a telecom engineer. Uh, this is called macro site. The macro site has different types, like the green field one, which this one is a green field. It's called green field. There is another type of macro site. It's called rooftop. Uh, you, you will find the rooftop version of the cell site. It should be installed on top of the building, like here. So uh, what are the main components of macro site? The macro site consists of a, a shelter, a small room like this, small white room like this. In this white room, you will find all the hardware related, uh, all the hardware components uh, related to this site. Like for example, the 2G cabinet, GSM cabinet, wideband CDMA or 3G cabinet, uh, 5G cabinet. You'll find also the transmission cabinet, the optical transmission cabinet, for example. So in general, uh, how does it work, this macro cell site? Uh, you have two types of antennas on, on top of the tower. You have a 3G antenna or 4G antenna, which is this antenna, which is responsible for uh, providing the cellular coverage to the mobile users in the area. You have actually you have three or two, depending on the sectorization uh, configuration of, uh, of the network. Uh, each antenna serves one sector, okay? And each antenna may support uh, one technology or two technology or three technology. You have 2G, 3G, 4G, or 5G, uh, or mix of them. Okay, and also there is another type of antenna on top of the tower which is a microwave antenna or microwave dish antenna. The microwave dish antenna is responsible for transmitting the data or transmitting the traffic from one side to another side or from one side to the hub or the, to the BSC. This is related to the network construction or network architecture. You already are familiar with this kind of, uh, of network. Uh, I just want to mention something here. Uh, uh, for the macro cell site, the maximum output power that can be transmitted from the macro cell site ranges from something like 10 or 15 watt up to 50 watt or 100 watt. So imagine that you are transmitting 50 watt or 100 watt from the base station. It really depends on the design. Let's say you have this macro site and it's transmitting very high power. I will just take it all like this, the macro cell site, and put it inside the building. Okay. In this case, I'm transmitting very high power. In the case of DAS, in case of distributed antenna system, I'm allowed only to transmit lower power, like maximum 10 watt or 15 watt from the antenna. And in this case, instead of transmitting or instead, instead of transferring the whole power to one antenna, I will just use several types, several number of antennas. Like in each floor, I'm just using, for example, 10 antennas or 15 antennas or 20 antennas to cover each floor. So I will just take the output power transmitted from the base, from the base station, okay, and then distribute it among all of these antennas inside the floor. By this way, I'm constructing a DAS network, a distributed antenna system network. This is how DAS works. Okay, I hope I hope it's simple and I hope it's clear for you. So it's generally it's a, a signal source, it's a power source, and you take that the output power of that source and distribute it among many number of antennas and this number of antennas are connected together via coaxial cables or via uh, splitters, tappers, uh, deplexers and so on. In the next section, when the, during our course, we're going to uh, go in deep detail of each and every component of that network. Okay. In the beginning of our session, uh, I mentioned something related to IBS in building solution. In building solution is not only about DAS. You have other types of IBS. The other types of IBS like Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, it's considered as an IBS solution because Wi-Fi, it can be implemented inside the building, okay? But Wi-Fi, it's limited by a certain area, by a small area, and it can serve around something like 200 users maximum, for example. So it's, it's related to a certain amount of users and it's related more to the uh, internet connectivity, okay? But it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of IBS, it's a kind of inbuilding solution. Another kind, which is the second type of inbuilding solution, which is called the small cell. A small cell, it's simply a standalone device uh, with attached antenna and it provides cellular coverage uh, on a certain technology. So a small cell is a single technology device, okay? 
A small cell has many flavors. Uh, you may find something called femtocell, picocell, microcell, uh, and metrocell as well. Femtocell, it's the smallest version of small cell. Femtocell provides a, a low power, like something like 100 milliwatt. And it serves, it supports something like six users or 10 users maximum for femtocell. Picocell, it's much bigger, it's much higher in output power, like 250 milliwatt, and it serves around 30 users or 40 users maximum. Metrocell is bigger. Metrocell provides uh, or supports something like 30 or 40 users uh, in each metrocell, and it also transmits around 2 watt. It's still low power. Okay, microcell uh, pro transmits higher power, something like up to from 5 watt to maximum 10 watt for microcell, okay, and it serves around 200 users inside the building. And as I mentioned at the beginning, all small cell flavors, all small, small cell versions support only single technology, okay. This is a problem or disadvantage, uh, one of the disadvantages of the small cell uh, comparing to DAS. A small cell is a single technology device, but DAS is a, is a multiple technology, multiple operator device as well. So the macro cell, which is our cell site here, we call it macro cell. Macro cell actually came from the same terminology of a small cell, because macro cell also transmits, uh, macro cell in this case uh, supports multiple technology, multiple operators. You may find different operators participating or sharing the same network uh, structure. Like you have, for example, you have in, in Saudi, you have Mobile, STC, Zain. They are participating in the same uh, network architecture. They are sharing the same network component, okay? And uh, they're transmitting on the same antenna, maybe, uh, according to the cooperation or the contract between them. So in the macro cell, uh, macro cell, it's related to the macro cell site or the, the higher coverage area, higher coverage radius, okay? We're talking about a kilometer or miles, okay? We're talking about high, high, much higher power, like minimum 10 watt. So we might find that uh, a macro cell transmitting like 15 or 20 or 50 or even up to 100 watt transmitted from the macro cell side, okay? So uh, as for now, we explain the concept of DAS, of distributed antenna system. So why do, you, do we really need DAS inside the building? As I, as I mentioned in the beginning, as a mobile phone user sitting at home, you require adequate data rate, you require reliable network connectivity, you need to do uh, proper voice calls, you need to do online calls, online meeting, uh, video streaming, all of these services, and especially with the coming 5G, with the current 5G deployment, uh, there are a lot of use cases uh, mobile operators should achieve with the, to their customers. Uh, like mo enhanced mobile broadband, like ultra reliable low latency application, like massive machine type communication, all of these use cases uh, have to be achieved to mobile users uh, for, for the 5G deployment. And inside building, as you know, applications are, there are more demand, there are high demand for different applications inside the building. Like for example, the online gaming. The online gaming requires uh, larger bandwidths, larger high data rates or higher data rates. And in this case, uh, mobile operators have to de deploy a dedicated system inside the building. They call it DAS, Distributed Antenna System. This is one reason why do we need DAS inside the building. The other reason, you cannot rely on the high and the output power of the macro cell side that can penetrate the building. You cannot rely on this because uh, many of the building right now, they are constructed uh, based on concrete walls. There are many concrete walls on the outer wall of the building. So uh, this kind of concrete walls uh, has, uh, li have like a very high attenuation level of the signal power or the RF signal, okay? Uh, it can, uh, it has something like maybe 10 dB or 12 dB or 15 dB of losses or attenuation to the RF signal. So you cannot penetrate the, the, the building using the, outdoors, the outdoor macro cell site. It's a waste of power resources. It's a waste of RF resources. So imagine that you are transmitting 50 watt here and here it's just right, uh, right outside the building. It's something like NIC 70 dBm or NIC 80 dBm. And let's say it's a NIC 70 dBm here outside the building. So imagine that you have a 10 dB attenuation here for, for the concrete wall. So NIC 70 uh, then plus or NIC 
10 dB losses here of concrete wall. So you have NIC 80 dBm inside the building. NIC 80 dBm in some, for some technologies, it's not enough to provide adequate coverage. It's not enough to uh, provide the services required inside the building. This is how it works. So uh, using the outdoor site to provide coverage inside the building is something not efficient. It's something, uh, it's, it's a waste of resources. It's a waste of RF power sources. Okay, and it's also it it it, it increases the traffic or the loading uh, on the macro cell site itself by doing by implementing and building solution or DAS network inside the building. You you are able to do offloading for the macro cell site. You are offloading the macro cell site for the number of users inside the building. And as I said in the beginning. Uh, most of the traffic, 70 or 80 percent of the traffic generated uh, from inside the building. So most of revenue, most of the revenues, uh, most of the return, the, 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 the number or the return on investment of the mobile operators is focused on the in-building traffic or the IBS traffic that coming from the inside the building. So many points have to take in, into consideration during that design, like I mentioned in the beginning. And there are some other points you need to consider during uh, DAS installation or DAS deployment. The first point is, is the handover or the transition between the outdoor network and the indoor network. There is something called handover and you may, uh, you are familiar with this handover concept. You need to hand over from one cell site, from the macro cell site to the inbuilding site or the DAS site. This handover has to be seamless and the DAS designers have to take that into consideration during the DAS design and also during the DAS deployment as well. Also for the DAS network, one of the, the main points the, the, you need to take into consideration, which is the RF exposure. There is a limit of the transmitted power that can be accepted inside the building for each and every antenna. So like I said in the beginning, you may have a DAS network that's transmitting something like 10 watt or 15 watt maximum. But you are not allowed to transmit the 10 watt over one antenna, one single antenna. This is very high power and it's, it's harmful for the human body on the long term. So according to the standard, there is, a, there is a certain limit for the RF exposure that's transmitted or the RF power that's transmitted from each antenna. You should take care of this point during the DAS design as well. Okay. The another, another third important factor a third important challenge during DAS deployment, which is the interference, which you call it RF interference. You need to mitigate or minimize the RF interference. You need to make sure your frequency is free of interference, clear of any interference around. You need to make sure your passive equipment, they don't generate something called PIM, passive intermodulation. The PIM rating of your DAS components work according to the standard. And there is a certain limit for that. And you need to make sure you take into consideration this, this number, this uh, limit. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is the DAS concept. This is how it works. Okay. And these are the challenge. Those are the challenges that we just mentioned during the DAS deployment. Okay. There are uh, three different architectures of DAS. There is passive DAS, there is active DAS, and there is hybrid DAS. We're going to know the differences between all of these types. We're going to know the, cons the components of each and every type of DAS during our course. We're going also to explain some tips and tricks tr during the installation of that kind of DAS uh, inside the building and how to test it, how to commission it, how to uh, do the acceptance test on such equipment uh, on, on field after DAS deployment. Okay, I hope uh, this session is clear for you. I hope it's simple and let's meet uh, inshallah next session with session number two and see you soon.